Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel. And today we're going to be taking a look at some measurements for the Soundcast VG5 and the VG7. I've recently done a binaural sound demo of those. And so if you're interested in more of the objective side, that's what this video is for. I'll leave a link to the binaural demo down below. And also I will be doing a full review. So if you're interested in that, then I'll also link to that down below once it's done. I should mention that these were sent to me by Audio Advice. They are one of my channel sponsors and I'll leave a link to these products on their website down below. All right, so let's get into it. Here we are in REW and uh, let's just go ahead and pull up some measurements here. And so this is the VG5. This is the smaller Bluetooth speaker. This is what happens when I measure the three inch aluminum driver up close. This is the frequency response of that and it has one on each side. So it also has a six inch woofer, which is surprising for a Bluetooth speaker. And this is the response of the six inch woofer when it's close by. So you can see it's significantly louder in volume than the other two speakers. So this is what happens if I measure from the front. Now, what I notice is if I measure from the side, it does have a different response because as you can tell, the speakers are on the side and that's why you get a lot more treble when you're actually facing the side of that speaker. So depending on what you like, if you want more treble, then I guess face the speaker towards you. And if you want less treble, then you kind of face the front towards you. If I look at the back, you can see that the back and the front have the same response. So this is the response of the speaker about two feet away from the floor. And this is when you have the VG5 on the floor, which is typically where you'd probably put it. Uh, you know, you're not typically putting Bluetooth speakers of this size, you know, on a table, but uh, this is the difference if you do, you notice that when it's on the floor, you do have significantly more bass. And you'd expect that because you're getting a boundary effect from the floor itself. This is the response if I were to stand up and take a measurement from a typical standing height. This is kind of the response that you'd expect. You'll notice that the response is similar to the response when you're listening to it from the front. It's a downward sloping response. Okay, so some people make the mistake of wanting a flat response at your listening position, and that's typically not what you want. It's counterintuitive in that if it's flat at your listening position, it usually sounds bright. So if it's flat near the speaker when you measure it, then it typically has a downward sloping response, and for most people, that's kind of a pleasing natural response. So I have my ghetto spinorama data here on axis. Here's the listening window response. This is the sound power response, and let's take a look at that for a second by itself. So the sound power is what happens when you measure all around the speaker, and it looks to me that they've kind of optimized for that sound power response. Now, that's not typically what you'd want to do with most loudspeakers because it's a Bluetooth speaker and you may not know where you're going to be relative to the speaker. You don't know where the speaker is going to be placed. Maybe this is not such a bad idea to optimize for the sound power. So this here is the directivity index, and you can tell that you know, there are some issues here, but it's flat here and there's a dip here and also it begins to rise. So this is obviously not a perfect directivity index and I don't really expect that from a Bluetooth speaker. All three of these measurements up here are different measurements from different angles. And you'll notice here that it's flat, meaning that all these kind of correspond. You can tell that they all follow each other. But here where it changes a lot, you can tell that there is a big change in the different responses and that's why the graph changes accordingly. So I'm gonna take a look at the minus three dB response and they claim a frequency response from 70 Hertz to I think 18 kilohertz. Um, so 70 Hertz is pretty good for a Bluetooth speaker and I was actually measuring bass below that. Now it's kind of tricky because they have this big bump right here in the bass response and even trickier because the response when it's on the floor is different. So I'm not sure exactly how they measured, but let's just take a look at the one where it's lifted off the floor. This is kind of the worst case scenario. So I was measuring a peak here, 96 decibels. So three dB down from that would be 93.75, 93.75 right around here. So it shows here 63.6 Hertz. Typically with speakers, you want this to be flat instead of having this big bump and so if that were the case, then you'd be looking at this as the reference point and the minus three dB point being around here at 40. Not really realistic, but you will hear this bass. I mean, because of this big bass bump, believe me, you'll hear these, you know, 40 Hertz tones. It's just not typically how you do the measurement. You measure from the peak here 
and where it's 3db down. Let's quickly take a look at if it was on the floor. Here's the peak, 101.77. So 199.98, around 60 hertz still. But it still means relative to the other frequencies here that this 35 hertz is about the same level as one kilohertz. So you'll hear some deep bass, but you'll also hear this big bass bump. Now moving on to the VG7, the bigger brother, and this is the measurement from the VG7 on the side. Now this one actually has four three inch drivers. And so it's kind of like a squarish shape and it has a speaker on each side, whereas the other one only had a speaker on two sides. So the first thing I notice is that this has a more, I guess, you know, wild frequency response. It has a big bass bump like the other one, but then it's up and then a big dip over here. And then it's up and down and up and down over here. All right. Um, the other thing I notice is that the grills on these actually come off. So this is what happens when you take the grill off of the VG7. It does affect the high frequency response and it's actually smoother without the grill. So without the grill, this is the frequency response, smooth. And with the grill causes these kind of like, I guess, comb filtering effects. Um, in either case, this is a lot of treble increase starting around seven kilohertz. Now this is again, when I'm pointing the microphone towards one of the sides, but if I aim it towards the front of the speaker, now I'm in between two speakers and kind of angled towards the front. So I'm off axis to each of them. And this is the response one I measure from the front. And so it looks to me like this is maybe a more pleasing response. If you don't like that extra treble boost, uh, it's up to you. Um, this is not also a perfect response. It still has this dip here, but um, you no longer have this dip. So that's the response when I'm in between the two speakers uh, facing the front of the device. And again, I took a measurement with no grill and that's an even better response with no grill. So real quick, let's take a look at the two EQ settings. So this is EQ one, and they also have an outdoor and indoor mode. I'm not sure exactly which one because it's not labeled, doesn't really tell you which one is which, but this is the other EQ mode and it actually has less bass. So I would assume that the one with more bass is the outdoor mode, just because typically when you're outdoors, because it's a, like a pseudo anechoic response, I guess you don't, you don't have echoes typically or um, you know, reverb when you're outside except from the floor. Um, and so you tend to have maybe less bass than when you have the speaker indoors and maybe they compensated and that's why this is, what is that? Maybe a 93, 94. And this one is 91. So about three dB up on the bass. So a little bit more bass on the other EQ, but the rest looks the same. For now, I'm gonna be taking a look at EQ one, the one with more bass the rest of the time. I did measure the speakers up close. And so this is one of the speakers and quickly comparing that to the VG five, I'm not sure if they're using the same three inch driver or not. They look very similar, but this is the response of the VG fives speaker. And you can tell it has a lot less treble response. So this is the VG sevens woofer. This is a seven inch woofer on this Bluetooth speaker. That's kind of crazy. And so you can see, again, uh, it's higher in volume than the other speakers. Now, what I found really interesting was you would expect the seven inch woofer to have deeper bass extension. I think they claim that it does, but in my measurements, I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, but the six inch woofer on the VG5 looked to me like it was actually playing a little bit deeper. Right. That's kind of crazy. Maybe it's the design of the enclosure. I'm not sure the DSP, but um, that's what I was measuring. Now it does look like the VG seven has a higher bass bump here. And in my binaural demos, I said that it sounded like it had more bass, the VG seven, but maybe it's because of the tracks I was playing. I, I wasn't familiar with those tracks. They were royalty free uh, music, but maybe it's because some of those had more bass in this region where it's a little bit louder. I'm not sure, um, but you know, that's why I do these measurements. So here's the VG seven when you're standing at the main listening position. So, you know, imagine standing up and about ear height. This is the kind of response that you'd expect to see. 
comparing that to the VG5, the VG5 has more of a treble drop off. And in my listening, I tended to like the VG5's sound a little bit more. Um, that's gonna depend on you. I did do a measurement of it on the floor and comparing that to when it's two feet up, you can see that, you know, you don't have this dip that I was getting here. Overall, it looks pretty similar, more bass like we were expecting. So looking at my ghetto spinorama data, this is the sound power, and this is what happens when you measure all around the speaker. So looking at that by itself, all right. So it's still got these wild fluctuations here, but um, maybe a smoother response than what we saw, uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's the sound power. And this is the directivity index of the speaker. So over here, it looks like it's more consistent in frequency response than the VG5. And that might just be because it has speakers on all four sides instead of just two. So there you have it. There are some in-room measurements, objective measurements. Take it with a grain of salt because they are in-room. But just to give you an idea of what I was measuring, in my space and where I was listening. If you wanna hear the binaural demo, I'll link to that down below. Also, my full review will be out in a day or so, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it, take care, bye-bye.